Hey guys, how are you guys doing? You guys, this video has been a long time coming actually. But you know, you have to give a nursing mother time to rest, time to recuperate, time to heal as well. But welcome back again to my channel. And you guys, I don't just have only Pepperenzi seated on the hot seat anymore. This is Mama Ejima right now. Status have changed. You guys already know that status have changed. You've seen dedication videos. You've just seen so many videos. So I have her here on the seat and let her just introduce herself with her new status. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, it's good to be here again. I know a lot of people have not seen my face in for a, while. a very, very, very long time. I've been on holiday. <laughs> you can say that again. On so postpartum I'm... holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm only pepperenzi again, but this time around, only pepperenzi with a sauce. <laughs> So you can call me the Pepperenzi BG, you can call me Mama BG, call me Mama Ijima, call me, you know, just just make sure that my title You guys, is the flex is different. I have changed. The flex is different, actually. It's different. But anyways, guys, we're just going to get straight into this video. I'm sure you guys will be wanting to hear from Oni, like the horse's mouth, like how it was, the journey thus far. And then, you know, just even nurturing her children. Because you guys hear from her mouth, she said a couple of times that it is how she asked God. That is how God gave it to her. So, it's a really chilled video. Like, it's, it's a really, really chilled video. Chill. Where's a cup of um, something? We are supposed to be taking <laughs> something for it to be chilled. <laughs> So let me just go straight to asking Oni, like, how was the experience? So which experience? So the experience happen? of, you know, a lot of people would just expect that when you get married, of course, you get pregnant and all, and, you know, you start popping out babies and all. So how was the experience when you got married? And, um, okay. So I got married in the heat of COVID. It is true. Yes. True. So then that was the COVID year. So COVID was lockdown year. And uh, my husband and I didn't want to, we didn't want to wait. Well, we were open to, you know, having children immediately. But again, there wasn't any form of pressure. We were just happy to enjoy ourselves and enjoy our companionship. Um, however, hmm, you can imagine being married in COVID with lockdown. Yeah. You know, now, new couple, you know, ah, suppose quick, <laughs> very, very fast. Because <laughs> we're working from home and all of that, but it didn't seem to happen that way in the first year of marriage. Well, it wasn't so much of a bother, even though um, my mind was, what's happening, what's happening, but it wasn't something I really wanted to worry about. Worry about. You know. But towards the end of the year, getting to the second year, it was obvious that, you know, there was, it, it doesn't quite adding up, you know, looking at everything that was happening. And then I began to worry. Okay, is everything all right? Or yeah. what's happening? Again, I had a very thriving career and that was also... That, uh, that's, that's even a significant point to make <laughs> a thriving career because it somewhat keeps your mind, you yes, know, yes, away so, from. Yes, so I wasn't, I was still focused on my career at that time. And I remember a couple of times when myself and Boom Sinjax, both of us, we talked about stuff. And I'll say, well, ah, at this point in time, I have this, I have this yeah. milestone to achieve and all of that. Maybe it's even God that is delaying things. And you were even so traveling a lot. Yes, and I was traveling because of work um, related yeah. reasons. So I had my mind occupied. However, I still had that desire to, you know, to want to be a mother. So after, I think when it became really, really worrisome was after two years. After the first two years, it became worrisome. I wouldn't say weren't, you know, talking about it and all of that. But it became really worrisome. And then I began to become sad about it. 
you know, their side effect that, you know. And I think part of what also triggered the sadness was Ah, many people are half, 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 and despite you know being sad about it and you know going through a phase where i was you know oh i really want this thing now 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 i was sure about something that i was going to be a mother yeah i was 100 percent sure that this was just a delay i never for once in this whole experience thought of myself as oh i will not be a mother oh I will not have my children. My anymore. children. I, I never had that. So it was a mix of, um, I would say I, I experienced different faces. The so face of, um, not, when I say not caring to a, or not bothering, to a face of bothering. Yeah. And that face of bothering, there were different things and different stages. In fact, I would say that that is really the time for me. It was a short period, but it was quite intense. And uh, maybe when you ask that question, I get to talk about. Okay, so um, I also asked the question as well. You know, during the time of your waiting, I was pregnant. A couple of people mm. were pregnant because you guys could see on in my baby shower, even in my photo shoots and all. And she wasn't pregnant at that time. And a couple of other of our close friends as well were pregnant and all. So. How did you feel then? What did you do? Like, how did you feel then? Were you just thinking, okay, if that's happened for this person, that means it's about to come to my doorstep? Or were there times that you were just really, really sad? Like, why is it not happening Happen. yet? So, the peak of when it became worrisome to me happened to be around the same time when um, people around me were getting pregnant. And don't get me wrong, I, it didn't become worrisome for me because people started getting pregnant. Mm. I already was in a phase where I was now worried about this thing. And um, I, as much as I don't want to get religious on this um, this talk, right? But I, I have to, I have to because I mean that's my faith and yeah. it's one of the things that helped me through this process. One of the things that I did was a time where I was really down, you know, ah, it was my husband that really, really saw the times when I was down. I know I tried to mask it a lot to friends, to people around me, but in the house at night, you know, times where I would cry, I would cry and cry. And then I had to tell myself genuinely that I had to get my happiness back. Yeah. Because I realized that it was beginning to affect me, right? And affect even my relationship with my husband because I used to get very easily agitated, very easily irritated. I would just be moody and all of that. And I had to go to God to first of all ask that I get back my peace and my happiness. Um, so my prayer was in different phases. So first of all, I needed to get my peace back. I, I did not want to lose that peace and joy I had in my home just on, on this account, right? Because of course, it was a journey we were going through together and he was very supportive, you know, through all hospital visits, this, that, that, you know. So I didn't want to lose my my peace. Yeah. So I had to go to God to first of all ask him for peace, peace of mind. And I remember very clearly, yes, I thought you mentioned that I wanted twins. I've always wanted to have twins. And always, always, yeah. Prayer. And it was not just twins, boy and girl. So after that prayer of asking God for genuine peace, I remember that two different things were laid in my heart. One was to get physical material physical oh yeah physical. you guys saw it during her, her photo, photo shoots, shoots. <laughs> that's the pair of stockings Socks. that i got blue and pink i had bought it a long time ago 
and I use that to constantly pray to call forth my children. Ah. So that was one thing that I did. And ah. the second thing that was laid in my heart was to start praying for people. Now, it's funny because around me, I had a couple of people who had also just put, uh, who had just gotten married, um, some people who were now just pregnant. So I had a, quite a list of people who were in that place at the same time, who had not waited as long as myself, though. Mm -hmm. But I just had that leading to start praying, praying for people. I had a list of people who now was on that list at some point. You should join the list. Um, of course, the noble souls was on the list. My sister-in-law. In fact, not just my sister, my sister-in-laws, you know, my sister-in-laws, a lot of them, people that are, <laughs> these are my sister-in-laws that got married way after me. And I started to pray for them. And the more I prayed for them, the more I felt the comfort that my own prayer was being answered. I don't know how to explain it, but after I prayed that prayer of peace, these are the two things I did. And to be honest with you, my peace returned. I can't explain it. Um, I had clarity, even in terms of how to go about, you know, um, my situation. Um, I remember I spoke with you, Buma, you had one who recommended, you know, I go see another, go to another, to seek another opinion. You know, at that point in time, I just started having clarity, there was peace and all of that. And it just started happening one after the other. All the people I said praying for, in fact, that was even the first sign I knew that this was coming very close. Yeah. So every person I prayed for, the person would get pregnant. And it was almost like, ah, this person is pregnant. Ah, in two weeks time, three weeks time, this person is pregnant. Ah, what's going on? This, this is how he's pregnant. And I kid you not, every single person that I was on my list got pregnant before me. And the moment the last person got pregnant, <laughs> I knew that my own was, was very, done very, deal. Was a done deal. Yeah. And to tell you guys how much done it was, the difference between my babies and the last person who was on that list is three months. She was pregnant. She told me, oh, she was pregnant. I remember when she said I hugged her, I cried, thank God together. And three months down the line, my name okay. So again, this was my journey, this is my experience. So I had a period where I was really sad, really gloomy. I sought the face of God and I believe very strong. And another thing is I always like children. So one other thing that I did very already. consciously was that I consciously took care of the children around me. I and consciously to care of the children of course yes i still do and i was very conscious and deliberate about taking care of the children around me and i would say to myself this i remember them going to tell me oh i don't scatter your house i would tell her this is rehearsal for me oh, i yeah. am preparing <laughs> so my house will change i remember then try to bubble scatter everywhere scatter. My house, jump on everywhere but i say come down i'll say see Buma, this arranged house is going to scatter in oh, yeah. few years so let him let me rehearse rearranging the house and so that was these were all the ways that i helped you know to manage through that time and genuinely i had peace even leading up to the time where i eventually got pregnant so now your children are here hmm. this is the final <laughs> now your children are here <laughs> Now you're not just child, now your children that you hoped you prayed you wished for are now here. Yeah. How is the feeling? <sighs> hmm. It is a truly beautiful experience. And um I remember I've shared a couple of people and I think the you also I was asking if it is different when you had to wait and when you just found out you're pregnant like oh you know, okay yeah saying, yeah yeah uh, i don't know whether it's because i had to wait that to be honest eh, the way i see my children yeah they, 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 they shock me yeah <laughs> then they shock me i know good lie ah it has been a very beautiful experience and don't get me wrong bro, it is challenging i don't this you see me looking like this last night I barely slept. 
the middle of the night, my daughter woke up, her nose was blocked. This, you know, she was crying back and forth, you know, through all of that, you know, it, it has its, it has its own side, but there's a joy that comes with doing these things, Yeah, you know, and one of the things and one of the ways generally I live is that I always like to live on the positive side and focus on the positive. So even when I experience challenges and all of that, it's because I always look out for the positive. I, I don't really get to get overwhelmed with negatives or not even negatives with the challenging side of motherhood so far. It's not easy, man. Sometimes the both of them are cranky, cranky. Sometimes there's this, but it has been a very, rewarding. very rewarding experience. It has been, it's a true reflection of who God is to us. You know, when I see them, the kind of love I have for them is beyond what I can explain. So when I see them, I it reminds me of the kind of love God has for us. Because I have the kind of love, like I have been able to experience another kind of love since I had these children. Uh -huh. There's a deeper sense of love like there's literally nothing i will not be able to do for my children now you know when they say i can give my life for my children legit that is the way i see it because they are so precious and even more so i know that these are gifts from god because this is exactly as i act and you know the funny thing all through my pregnancy i was only able to confirm the sex of one, one of yeah. the twins, and it was a boy. We weren't able to tell if the second was a girl or not. But when we were doing our photo shoots, I said, no, it is boy and girl. Yeah. When me and my husband were looking for names, we were looking for names of boy and girl. We were so sure. In fact, when Boomsi, when I was shopping for things for, well, we bought some things, most of the things we bought were unisex and all, but um, I remember then some of Kaima's um, shoes and all of that, Boomsi was like, uh, I said, bring them. So even before the children arrived, I already arranged their room and got some things that Kaima had used and I arranged them knowing that my baby girl is coming. <laughs> So this is I'm literally so like walking sure in faith. That I was so sure that I'm very sure that these are genuine gifts from God. And as much as it is an overwhelming experience, I don't want to undermine, you know, the experience of some mothers who find it genuinely tough. Because trust me, it's not easy. The sleepless nights are real. The sleepless nights are real. The first one week or two weeks. Ah, it was really, really overwhelming, but I have gone past that place a long time ago. It's just, it's just been a beautiful experience. It's been a beautiful experience, <laughs> honestly. And I'm sure you guys have been waiting to hear. I've been seeing people say, oh, Bomsi, bring on in and let her speak to us and all. You can hear her experience. And I'm sure that the significant thing that I actually got from this, you know, chit chat we had today is that exercise your faith and watch God just work things out for you. You know, faith is, you don't see it. You've not touched it. You've not felt it, but you believe within your heart that it is coming and it will happen. So yeah, you guys, this is our story. This is our testimony. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I definitely will see you guys in our next video. And let me allow Mama Ibej to say, Bye. You know my mom used to call you like Mama oh, yes, Ibeji before. Yes, um, your mom used to call me Mama Ibeji. Yeah. And every time I remember that time you're, when your mom called me Mama Ibeji. There was a time you say that. Uh, let her stop. Yeah, yes. yeah. And her. I told you, please don't do yeah. that. Yeah. Don't do that because Buma felt that her mom was embarrassing me, being that I hadn't gotten pregnant and she's calling me with my Mama Ibeji. And Buma wanted her, you know, was questioning her mom. I said, no, don't do that. I own that name. So right from time, that's what she used to call me. And it's had come to pass today. You get it. You know, so... Um, it's just our woke generation. <laughs> I would say be sensitive with this one. But anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching today's video. Thank and I'll you. see you guys. Bye.